Hey everyone, Jared VK3BL here, and I've got a bit of a cold or summer flu at the moment, and it's broken my voice, so rather than do one of my trademark long-winded videos, I'm going to do a short one for you. And this video is basically my list of recommendations on who should buy the IC9700, and um, I guess who shouldn't. And one list is longer than the other, and we'll soon find out which one it is. Now first of all, uh, if you're considering purchase an, uh, purchasing an IC9700, you should ask yourself, can I afford it? Now, it's, I reckon, a very good value radio for what you get, but, um, it, you know, being an early adopter, um, the radio is always going to be a slightly higher price because there's a lot of demand for this particular radio. So, you know, if, if, um, if you can only just justify the purchase, uh, wait a couple of months, wait for some firmware releases, wait to hear some stories about people operating it in different conditions and see if it suits your use case. Um, so that's, uh, you know, one of the first things. So let, anyway, let's uh, pretend that you can uh, afford it. And by that, I mean uh, the, the uh, however much money it is, is not going to be a dent in your pocketbook, uh, not a significant one, or it's in your amateur radio budget. Um, these are the people who I think should buy it. Um, firstly, anyone who enjoys a rag chew. Now, this radio is fantastic for use with FM and um, and repeaters. Uh, it's got the. It's very easy to program with the free um, ICOM CS ninety seven hundred software. I downloaded that uh, about two nights ago and basically just cut and paste all the repeaters that I like to use out of the uh, CS seventy one hundred software that's free with the um, little ICOM. IC7100 here and uh, fully programmed it up and away I go. Now the lovely thing about the uh, um, IC9700 when it comes to um, FM repeater work is you can have your main receiver um, dedicated to scanning one bunch of receivers, uh, repeaters sorry, and you can have your sub receiver um, uh, dedicated to scanning a, uh, another bunch of repeaters on different frequencies. So with mine at the moment, I've got it. Um, I've got uh, the VHF range up the top, and the UHF or 70 centimeter band in this case down the bottom. It's happily scanning away on 70 centimeters, and there's a bunch of my friends talking on um, two meters on VK3 REC at the moment. So I've got it listening there. So I'll just turn it up for a second. <laughs> I, no, I don't want to embarrass them. But you get the point there. Now, why do I recommend this over some other radios for FM repeater usage? Well, I like having a desktop radio, um, and I really like the fact that you can use an audio scope. So I'll just kill the second receiver here for a second, and you do that just by holding this button in. And when people are talking, you can see. Um, and it's a bit hard to see on the screen there, I'll show a close-up another day, but you can see the audio quality, and when people are setting up their radio for the first time, um, it's very easy to give them an audio report and say, hey, you've got a lot of highs, you've got a lows, that's, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, it is a lovely base station for repeater work. Now, is it an overkill for that sort of purpose? Well, if that's all you're planning to do with it, probably, um, you could get away with a mobile radio, but I quite like having a full-size radio on my desk. I like the scanning speed. Um, I like the fact I can scan two bands at once quite easily. Uh, and I like the, the audio scope function here. Um, unlike HF, where I never use the audio scope function much because of band noise, it really comes into its own on FM, where you know you really can tweak things to have beautiful sounds. So, FM repeater users, I really think you're going to love the audio scope on this radio and the fact that you can scan two bands uh, at the same time. Now, I must note you can't scan, you can't have your main receiver and your sub receiver on the same band. Um, there's no combination of doing it. You can't have uh, um, two meters and two meters, 70 centimeters and 70 centimeters, or um, 23 centimeters and 23 centimeters. You can't do that. So. Uh, if that's going to be a problem for you, um, you know, maybe don't buy it, but uh, I can't really see how that's a problem, to be quite frank. It's not, uh, the, the scanning speed is so fast, um, 
And look, at the, at the end of the day, if you look at the block diagram and how the radio works, you'll understand why you can't do that. It's because each, um, each band, I guess, has its own dedicated um, input into the ADC. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. I, it doesn't bother me at all. I, so I wouldn't rate that as a deficit. I'll get back out of this now. Um, one of scope and we'll turn the sub receiver back on and it's happily still scanning in the um, 77 meter band for me there so um, at the end of the day the way I see it is if you're actually actively talking on a band um, you're probably not going to be that interested in scanning the same band so FM repeater users you're going to love this radio it's beautiful and if you want to drive it with a nice big mic like this uh, Heil PR7, uh, 781 which is right, my radio's recommended amateur radio mic it uh, sounds beautiful and you'll get good reports. So that's another nice thing about it, that just a standard high cable plug straight into this radio, not a problem. Um, another group of people who should buy this radio are satellite operators. Um, you know, there's been a... And while I'm making this list, there's been a bit of a, a, a poo-pooing on this radio. And uh, I'll go into that. Well, you've probably seen my Haters Delight video where I go into that. And that's basically some people um, who wanted to, I guess, work certain modes, um, found that the radio didn't suit their needs. And the fact of the matter was, even when they tested it, the radio was in their, was in, within specification. So, um, and that got a few people anxious. And some of the people who were anxious were satellite operators. Now, uh, there's a lovely video out there by a VK5 um, of him using this radio um, to work a satellite. And I forget the name uh, off the top of my head, you'll have to bear with me because I'm sick, but I'll try and put a link in the description. And it basically shows um, this, the VK5 operator using Mac Logger, um, sorry, Mac Doppler um, to control the radio, flicking back and forth, and he's working a bunch of other VKs using a bird in the sky. No worries at all, sounds beautiful. So satellite operation, um, full duplex satellite operation, not a problem. If that's your thing, you're going to love this radio once again. Uh, you should buy it. Now, who else should buy it? People who are interested in working, say, 23 centimetres on SSB uh, and things like that. And just general SSB usage as well. Um, 2 metres, 70 centimetres, uh, 23 centimetres. It has RIT control. It has fine frequency adjustment. You're going to be able to do um, DXing on this. In fact... Um, Rob Sherwood's testing um, rates this radio a, a close in, which is the 2 kilohertz um, range with a dynamic range of 74 decibels. That's actually better than any other, um, I guess, VHF and UHS, UHF desktop radio that's ever been tested. So that's a, a fantastic um, rating for this radio. And um, I've been corresponding with ICOM, and ICOM have actually said their numbers, well, Rob's numbers are probably slightly low. So um, ICOM actually, while they didn't re um, reveal their, their sources um, or the, their numbers, they, they actually um, measured the radio better than that. So there you go. So um, for weak signal work, 2 metres, um, 70 centimetres, and two, 23 centimetres, SSB, with... Um, you know, at very least a high gain antenna like um, a Diamond X7000 up nice and high, or if you can, um, some rotatable uh, beams, you're going to have a great time. I'd recommend the rotatable beams if you can get there. That's the best way of doing 2 and 70 DXing, and um, I'd say it's mandatory for 23 centimetres. The fact of the matter is, uh, even running something like Alumar 400, you've probably lost half your power on, you know, like a 50-foot run to your antenna anyway. Now, I'd have to, I'd have to do the math to find out exactly what it is, but you've only got 10 watts, so um, go and put a beam up there if you're really going to chase 23-centimetre decks. Now, and this is where I'll address that, um, that poo-pooing that I was talking about. Um, people were pointing out that when you're on 23 centimetres, the radio drifts in transmit frequency a little bit. And that's true. All radios drift in transmit frequency. But we're not talking about the kind of drift of the old boat anchor days where you had to leave it on for 30 minutes and, um, you know, while you were listening, you were continually adjusting the RIT knob, um, receive incremental tuning uh, to keep the other person uh, um, in frequency. We're not talking that sort of drift. 
there's a little bit of drift when you first key up as the PA section warms up and, um, and that's about it. Now, that's not a problem for SSB usage. That's not a problem for FM usage at all. In fact, when you're using this radio, you'll find out that a lot of your favorite repeaters aren't exactly on frequency. What it is a problem for is a weak signal mode known as WSPR, W-S-P-R. Now, why is it a problem? Because WSPR has, as a mandatory specification, no more than three hertz drift. Now, to put things into perspective, when you're transmitting on 1.25 or 1.27 gigahertz, three hertz is a very small number. Like you get the decimal point, you add a lot of zeros, that's where the three hertz lives. And the fact of the matter is, you need something like an atomic clock to make a radio that stable. So, um, you know, if you expect the IC9700 to have an atomic clock built into it, don't buy it. The fact of the matter is, ICOM have actually put a little um, foam box, I suppose, over the, the master oscillator to try and minimise any drift effects. Uh, Rob Sherwood, um, who once again has a long track record of accurate measurement, and he measured it using a HP 5335A um, frequency counter, which is a bit of test equipment, dedicated to counting frequency, as I've uh, mentioned before. He measured the drift at about 70 hertz maximum, independent of what mode you were using on 70 centimetres. And that's really good. Not good enough for whisper, but the fact of the matter is not many operators are going to be interested in continuously transmitting um, a signal basically saying, hey, I'm here, can you hear me? Uh, excuse my cold there, I didn't mean to impersonate a child. Um, no, that's not, not a mainstream activity and it's not what this radio was designed for. Who else might want to buy it? Anyone who wants to play around with their radio remotely. I mean, it comes with an Ethernet port. You can just plug into it. Um, admittedly, you have to buy the ICOM application, RSBA1 version 2. Um, Sorry for version 1 owners, you, there's no upgrade path other than uh, buying it again, but version 1 is very old, so that's kind of fair enough. Um, so yeah, anyone who wants to be able to contact their radio remotely, maybe, um, I think there's even maybe a, a, an Android app, but I could be wrong, I'd have to follow up on that. I'm an iPhone user myself, so it's no, no good to me. Um, I think that's sensational. At that price point, to come with an Ethernet port, it's, I think, the first ICOM radio to do so uh, at that price point. To get an Ethernet port on an ICOM HF radio, you have to step up to the ICOM 7610. So I think that th puts things into perspective. So that's a lovely feature. Um, and, you know, once again, as I said, another nice feature is I've got my friends here talking on um, my external speaker, but if I was to uh, pick up someone on the 70 centimetre band and I've only got one speaker plugged in, um, it would actually come out of the internal speaker here. You can change that in the menu if you want to, um, I haven't, but it's actually got two jacks on it, one for the main receiver and one for the sub receiver. So you can have two speakers plugged in, it can have the audio from each receiver coming out of um, each speaker, which is perfect if, say, uh, you've got your main chat uh, a frequency and then you're maybe listening to an emergency frequency or something like that. So it's perfect for that. Now, one group who definitely shouldn't buy this radio, I guess, is anyone wanting a, radio, a 2 and 70 radio that comes with general received coverage. Because of the design of this radio, it only covers the ham bands. It can't be modified to cover any more than the ham bands. It's strictly 144 to 148 megahertz at most, depending on region, but even if you modify it at most, and um, on 70 centimeters, it's 430 to 450. I don't know exactly what it is on 23 centimeters. I don't have a lot of experience on that band due to lack of usage in VK. Now, given that the rate that these things are selling in VK, I know for a fact ICOM's got their pricing right on this model, 
and um, I'm hoping some people around me will buy them and I'll be able to get some 23 centimeter experience. I've put up my Diamond uh, X7000 antenna yesterday um, in anticipation of this. So, and <laughs> with my cold afterwards, I slept for the next six hours, but um, it's up there and hopefully I'll be able to play around with 23 centimeters some more. So, um, yeah, if you need a general coverage receiver for emergency um, com, MCOMs, or even you just like to listen to the voice frequencies in your area or whatever if they're not encrypted, the emergency services frequencies, this isn't the radio for you. In fact, the little, the little IC7100 uh, will give you a nice general coverage receiver if that's what you want. So this is a dedicated ham band receiver. If you need more than that, don't buy it because you'll be disappointed. And there's no point buying something and being disappointed. So read the spec sheets, look at the reviews if you're in doubt, uh, view the videos on YouTube, get a feel for, um, for how people are using a radio before you go out and show your money if you can't truly afford it. Because there's, in my mind there's nothing worse than, in, in two ways, than someone buying a radio that they can only just afford, um, then being disappointed in the feature set, um, one that's, you know, upsetting for the individual, but, you know, then getting on social media and complaining about it, I guess. And uh, one prominent case, and this is partly ICOM's fault, I, I will acknowledge that. Um, the IC9700 came with a little uh, SMA connector, female, that had 10 megahertz reference written on it. And a lot of people thought that that meant you'd be able to plug an atomic clock in, and uh, I guess get that 3 hertz on uh, 23 centimeters for whisper. But actually, the reality is it just lets you calibrate your radio. So it's for calibration purposes. It's not for attaching an atomic clock to your radio. I mean, let's face it, most of us don't have them. Um, and I say atomic clock, but you can also use a GPS, uh, a a GPS disciplining module. So those users, um, they saw that feature, they saw it on the back panel, some of them shelled out their hard-earned cash, went and bought it, and they were disappointed. And that's where I'm seeing most of the negativity coming from around the IC9700 at the moment. It's certainly not from F um, repeater users. It's not from D-Star users. Uh, that's a group I mentioned who'll probably love this radio. Um, it's got D-Star digital 128 uh, kilobits uh, data mode and the network port to support that. Um, so you can connect up to two of these radios, two computers, and have a network. Um, I thought that was dead when ICOM discontinued the IC, uh, sorry, the ID1. Um, but luckily it's been revived, and that's something I really want to play with. So I'm glad that has it in it. So anyway, D-Star users are going to be happy. SSB DXs are going to be happy. Basically, everyone's happy, except for the people who expected to be able to use this for whisper mode. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is, you know, if, if you, you can't truly afford a radio, don't buy it straight away. Let the dust settle, let the reviews come out. Find out how people are using it and that sort of thing. Now in this case, you'll find heaps of YouTube videos, um, as I said, people using it to work satellites, people using it to work repeaters. I've been doing that a fair bit lately and uh, it's been quite a lot of fun. As I said, I've loved using the audio scope um, you can hear the difference, oh, the receiver's so nice, you can hear the difference between different operators, you can see it on the audio scope. Um, it really adds a new dimension to using FM repeaters in my mind. Uh, not so much the spectrum scope, but um, certainly the, uh, the audio scope in this case, which is the reverse of HF. Um, so yeah, I, I guess that, that sort of covers, I guess, who should buy it, who's going to be happy with it, and who's not going to be happy with it. And uh, I'm, I guess I must mention those, that, that group that's not happy with it, the people who want that 3 hertz stability at 23 centimetres, um, that group has actually modified every single commercial radio they've ever owned to get that feature set. The IC9100 didn't have that stability. Neither did, did the IC9910H. Neither did the IC... Um, 970H, neither did the IC202 if you go back that far, which is still one of the best 2 meter SSB radio, uh, um, all mode radios ever released, even though it's not exactly practical. 
Um, so, you know, the Kenwood 2000, uh, TS-2000X didn't have that stability. No commercial radio ever has. So I do acknowledge that ICOM teased them by putting the, I guess, the reference connector on the back, and um, then it turned out it was only for calibration purposes. If ICOM can fix that in firmware, um, that would basically, basically get rid of, uh, I guess, the sole complaint anyone's had with this radio so far. But, uh, you know, the vast majority of people are going to love this radio. So um, my recommendation is if you can afford one, and I mean truly afford one, go ahead and be an early adopter. I don't see the price dropping much in the future. I think it's very well priced to begin with. Um, pretty much everyone that was delivered to my local ham radio dealer, who I'm quite good friends with, has sort of been sent off already. Uh, I think we're probably waiting for the next batch now. Um, and I know a lot of people in the US, in EU, in the United Kingdom, they're on wait lists for them. So they are well priced. I don't see them dropping a whole lot, but if it's something where it might be your only home radio, ham radio purchase for the year, you know, if it's a, you can justify it, not afford it, um, maybe wait a bit and just make sure it meets your needs. That way you won't get on social media and, uh, you know, and feel upset and I guess discourage other people who have been really waiting for this radio and, um, from buying it and who would really enjoy it. This is Jared VK3BL saying 73 for Ray My Radio and hopefully you could uh, understand me with my funnily croaky voice. See you later. <laughs> 73s.